guys and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys. Originally we were going to be talking about Stephen King's new book If It Bleeds but I'm not done with it yet. It arrived kind of in the middle of this week and last night I was thinking I could power through this but I'm really enjoying it so I don't want to rush just for the sake of finishing. So I thought today we would do a book tag and this is called the My Life in Books book tag. I found it on a blog, I just kind of googled book tags, and this blog, Dreamland Book Blog, I'll link that down below, came up and this was the tag. So I'm not entirely sure where it originated, but that's where I found it. So question number one is find a book for each of your initials. Very interesting. Like I said, I'm Shannon, so for S I picked Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. She wrote Gone Girl, that's kind of her big, the big book that everybody was reading about five or so years ago. And this one, Sharp Objects, was actually made into an HBO miniseries, I think. I think it was just the one season, um, starring Amy Adams. And um, that was a great series, and this was a good book. I enjoyed the book more than the miniseries, but uh, both are good. And this was, this keeps you guessing, and I really enjoyed it. Next up is for my middle name, and that begins with an N. <laughs> and this is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I love Neil Gaiman. He's one of my favorite fantastical storytellers. He always makes books interesting, and I just love the worlds that he creates, even in smaller scale, like he wrote a couple episodes of Doctor Who. And those episodes were so good. He's just such a good storyteller. And so yeah, Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Next up, my last name starts with a C. And so I picked this, this is the Crystal Bible. And it's just a book filled with all kinds of info on just about any crystal you can think of. So you're looking for Moonstone, well it's got you covered, and it's all in alphabetical order. It's huge. It, I've never not found a crystal in there. And it's got a lot of great info as well about caring for your crystals, cleansing them, things of that nature. Question number two. Count your age along your bookshelf. What book is it? So for that you just pick a bookshelf, count, count along however old you are, which is um, 38 for me and grab that book. So this is Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. There's no real rhyme or reason to this. It was just completely fluky that this is the one we landed on. Chuck Palahniuk's an interesting author. I was really into him when I was younger, like in my 20s, my early to mid 20s. Um, I don't read so much of him anymore, only because, I don't know, I feel like he really fits that kind of when you're young and I don't know. Um, Fight Club was his big hit that kind of everybody knows that was made into a movie starring Brad Pitt and um, Edward Norton. I think that was in 1999 or 2000 and he's got, Chuck's got a ton of books and uh, all the ones I've read I have enjoyed so again I don't know why I stopped but Invisible Monsters, this one was good. I've heard rumors of this being made into a show or a movie but that hasn't happened yet. My nails kind of match it. Ooh. Question number three is a book set in your city or country. I certainly couldn't find one set in the town where I live, but in my country there have, of course is so many fantastic books that are set in Canada. But for this I'm going to go with All My Puny Sorrows, which is, if not my favorite book of all time, it's in the top five. It's so good. If you have not read this, definitely read it. It's a heartbreaking story that is just beautifully written by a very talented Canadian author and it's semi-autobiographical which just makes it hit all the harder when you read it and know what the subject matter is about and it's about two sisters, one who's really struggling um, emotionally and mentally and kind of the journey that they take together and the one sister desperately trying to save the other one's life and it's so good. I could cry just thinking about it. <laughs>
Question number four. Pick a book that represents a destination you'd love to travel to. For that I picked A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. This is set in Paris. It's not a novel, like it's not fiction. It's kind of an account of his time there, but it's set in Paris in the 1920s and it's just so... I don't know, it's the kind of book that makes you nostalgic for a time and a place that you've never been. And I, I always get that feeling when I read this book. Very good. Love it. <laughs> Question number five. Pick a book that's your favorite color. When I was doing this I was a little surprised on how few books are in my favorite color and that's red. And this one is from Stephen King. It's Night Shift. It's one of his short story collections. And um, it has, this is a collection that has The Children of the Corn in it, which was a movie I think made in the 80s. It scared the crap out of me when I was a kid and watched it. And yeah, this is the book that it's from. So many of his movies, or movies based on his work, have been based on his short stories, which is so interesting. Like, Stand By Me, 1408. I'm sure there's many more. And I don't know, I was always surprised because you always think it'd be based on a novel, but he's so good at short stories. So good. Apt Pupil. That was another one. Just so good. So, read. <laughs> Question number six is which book do you have the fondest memories of? This would probably, I went back and forth between Little Women and Anna Green Gables because I read them both kind of around the same time when I was very young and the memories that I have associated with them I kind of have associated with both of them um, just about that time and that place it's uh, my happiest memories but I guess we'll go with Anne of Green Gables because for that I have the added memory of when I was in my mid-20s me and my mom and my sister and my daughter who was like three or four at the time um, we were living in Ontario then and we drove over to Prince Edward Island which is where Anne of Green Gables takes place and we toured inside the Green Gables home. We went to a recreation of Avonlea. It was just so good. So we'll go with Anne just because there's that extra layer of memories. Question number seven is which book did you have the most difficulty reading? And for that, I'm gonna have to go with A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. That one was tough. That was a tough read. And I'm trying to think of how old I was when I read it. I feel like I'd like to try again, but it was so difficult the first time that I'm like, but there's all these other fun books to read. <laughs> Why would I wanna read that one again? Um, I'm sure someday I will, but um, yeah, it was it was a fantastic book, but it was a difficult read and it took me a while to get through. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Once I was done, it was one of those books where when you're done, you're like, okay, we're done. Thank God, but I enjoyed the story once I was finished with it. <laughs> and the final question here is, which book in your to be read pile will give you the biggest accomplishment when you finish it? And that was an easy one to answer. It is The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. I've had this book in my possession for, oh geez, two years maybe. I'm on page 86. Um, I have two copies of it because I bought it a second time not realizing this is the movie tie-in cover and then I have the other cover. I bought it twice because it sounds so interesting and <laughs> I didn't realize I already had it. And every time I try to read it, I just, I can't get into it. But I know that when I do get into it, I'll love it. So I think what's going to happen now is I'm going to save it until the fall when we start reading, you know, some spooky stories for October. Hopefully we're not still in isolation then. Oh my goodness, can you imagine? <laughs> Uh, but anyway, let's not think about that now. Um, so yeah, I'll probably save this now till the fall, but when I finally, when I finally read this book, um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very happy about it. And yeah, it's about a haunted house. Um, it sounds fantastic. It says, one post-war summer in his home in rural Warwickshire, Dr. Faraday is called to a patient at Hundreds Hall. 
Home to the Arias family for more than two centuries, the Georgian home, once impressive and handsome, is now in decline. Its owners, mother, son, and daughter, are struggling to keep pace with a changing society, but are the Ariases haunted by something more sinister than a dying way of life? Little does Dr. Faraday know how closely and how terrifyingly their story is about to become entwined with his. And there's a quote on the back here that just says, a classic gothic page turner. And like, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. It sounds exactly like what I'd love to read. It's just, I think I keep, in my mind, I keep pushing it. I'm like, just save it for October when we're doing spooky things. <laughs> so anyway, once I, once I get her done, I'll be happy. And I think I might do a giveaway at that time since I do have two copies. I can give one to you guys and you can also enjoy the story. So there we go. Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, you guys. Coming up next, we're going to have chapter six maybe six and seven. We'll see how long the chapters are, but at least chapter six this weekend of Emily of New Moon. And yeah, I can't wait to share that with you guys. Bye.